Our final segment is called The, the Game, Game is Rigged. rigged. For the kids at the Eamon Cannon Comedy Project at Inner City Arts, it can feel like the game is rigged against them because it is. Now, Susanna is doing her part to help unrig the game, but we thought it would be fun to invite a guest to play a game to help her unrig it even more. If you watch the internet, you're probably already following our next guest on Twitter. He was the co-host of uh, he was the co-host of the Totally Rad Show, and he has a new project we're going to get to hear all about. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Jeff Kanata. Hey, that's me. Yeah. You guys <laughs> Over here. You sit there. We've played a fun little. Oh, this, this seat is quite lower than your seats. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, well, you know. That's all right. So, thanks for coming in. Uh, first things first, what's happening on your face here? What's going on with that? Want to talk about that? Well, I'm trying a new eyeshadow. Oh, <laughs> you, you, you seem to have missed. Little. Oh, you mean the, the mustache? I'm doing. A, I'm doing a play right now, uh, set in the 1930s, called The 39 Steps. So I had to draw. Ooh, somebody knows it. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, they said, yeah, it's good. It's full really disclosure, great. I have seen this play and it is hilarious. Where might other people see this play? <laughs> <laughs> just take her word for it. Uh, it's, uh, it, it was playing at the uh, Norris Center and we just closed. We had our final performance there on Sunday, but we're moving, good news. Yay! We're moving to uh, Palm Springs. So if you guys find yourselves oh, in the desert. Conveniently located in <laughs> Palm <laughs> Springs. We'll be performing in Palm Springs. <laughs> I do encourage you to make a weekend of it and go. It's very, very it's funny. It's so good that I'm willing to walk around looking ridiculous all the time. Yes, so. stay away from unmarked vans. Okay. <laughs> um, I have to legally. <laughs> so, you did improv for many years. True. <laughs> yes, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> I see what he did there. See what he did? Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, you are obviously a performer, but uh, thinking about the kids we just saw on the video, are there ways you feel like learning improv and other forms of comedy have helped you in your life outside of being in show business? Absolutely, uh, because I'm barely in show business. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's awesome watching that video. I was so inspired back there watching that. Um, it, you know, it's all about communicating and to empower kids to feel good enough to stand up there by yourself and speak and, and have other kids listen to you. That is such a tool that will, will help you in every facet of life. I mean, I, I, I think that every accomplishment I've ever achieved in my life, small or large, is a result of my falling in love with language as a, as a young person and, and I, to get kids to fall in love with expressing themselves and putting words together in a in a pattern in, in the musicality of that, it's a great gift. Yes, agreed. Well yeah. said. Thank because you. Because of your love of language. Well, <laughs> now there's a lot of pressure on me. To be well done. Eloquent. Now, uh, as you could tell, it's very enjoyable to listen to Jeff talk, which people discovered when you were the co-host of the Totally Rad Show, which is why you have legions of fans. Uh, for those who don't know, this was a video podcast that Jeff co-created uh, right on the cusp of podcasts. Most people were still going, what's a podcast? And I was still going, what's DSL? And uh, <laughs> it became hugely popular. Tell us how that came to be and how you were so close to the zeitgeist. Oh, ah. <laughs> well, I'd been looking at the zeitgeist for a long time and pl planning and plotting. No, uh, the um, the show really became grew out of a friendship, it, The two of my two other co-hosts. And I became buddies, and uh, right at the, the time the technology was empowering people to be able to put stuff out, and iTunes was accepting podcasts, and, and all of a sudden, video equipment became cheap enough to use. I mean, it, everybody knows the story of the last, really not that long, <laughs> six or seven years. Back as, in the day. Yeah, I mean, this Deanna was, we were, what, say. about seven or eight years ago we started our show, and there were, really wasn't much in the way of video on the web at that point. I um, mean, it was right when YouTube was starting. Uh, and um, we just kind of happened to be at the right place at the right time, and and I think we we talked. Uh, you know what? I've been talking to her. I should okay, be talking okay. to you more. No, it's okay. Uh, I'm just gonna work on <laughs> opening this yes, for yes, a while. Yes, yes, you have a mustache on. Talk just to me. Yeah. Talk to you me. like the stash, huh? <laughs> Sorry, honey. Um, <laughs> Love you. Uh, anyway. <laughs> what are you doing after? 
Um, the, <laughs> so your show was extremely popular, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so much so that you went from being a fanboy at Comic Con to a panelist at yeah. Comic Con. What was it like to go to the other side of the table and have fanboys seeking you out and fangirls throwing themselves at you? And well, did anyone the, dress as you <laughs> for the convention? Um, well, the, the uh, honestly, that was a dream come true because I I did used to drag my mother to Comic-Con when I was a kid. Oh, and, uh, wow. No, no, she, no, what, what, she loves it. What's that about? <laughs> you don't like Comic-Con? Yes, she does. You guys, when this show takes off and you have to go to Comic-Con, you're gonna uh, be, we'll, we'll be apologizing to me. Yes. Um, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it was it was amazing to be able to it was amazing to be able to be there as a as a, have a professional badge and and I remember the first time I got one of the, they give, everybody at Comic Con has a little placard and a oh. Hershey kiss. A, whether you're J J Abrams or me, <laughs> you, get that. you have uh, the same placard and a Hershey kiss and so I I kept the placard and I ate the kiss. <laughs> well done. It was well, savory. Done. Uh, so now I you have a new project. Tell us what you are working yeah, on Yeah, I just now. launched a new show on the 5x5 Five Five network called DLC. It's an audio show about uh, video games, and we just did our sixth episode this morning, actually. It's a live show, which is really cool. Uh, we have um, call-in, live call-ins and stuff. It's, it's great. And what's it called? DLC. DLC, sorry. And yeah. where can people listen to it? In Five, Palm Springs? On iTunes. <laughs> or, oh, that's, uh, that's more convenient. On uh, Really, anyway, R it has an RSS feed. The easiest way is 5x5.tv slash DLC. You, everyone wrote that. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Well, uh, thank you so much for being here. We wish you the best of luck with your new show. And as you know, we're not just here to talk about how great you are. We just thought that would be polite to do before we take your money playing a game that's rigged. You didn't really do that, though. You kind of just made fun of my mustache. <laughs> I plugged all your shows, oh, Jeff. What do you want from me? <laughs> and then you sympathize with my mom. Go Comic -Con. <laughs> I sent positive thoughts to your mother. That's yeah. nice. That is nice. <laughs> I really should do that more often. Go ahead. Stop, Sorry. stop your delay tactics. We're taking your money. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play The, the game, game is Rigged! When you answer right, go ahead and grin Just keep in mind that you won't win But losing should never cause you shame Because you know we bring the game! They are delightful. Aren't they? they? Aren't they? I, like them. I like them very much. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you understand that the game you're about to play is rigged, correct? Well, I'm pretty good at games, so I think I can, I think I can win. Okay, but the point system is designed so that no matter what, you are going to lose. You understand that, right? But if I get all the questions correct, I will win. Okay, so it's called The Game is Rigged because you, you will not walk away a winner. We just want to make that clear. Got it? I'm going to win. <laughs> Okay. okay, so knowing that you are going to lose yes. whatever amount of money you bet, you bet. Right. how much are you willing to wager that you will win this game? I'm wagering everything that's on my person at the moment. Oh, everything that's on your person. Which is this microphone, <laughs> my shirt, and this crisp $50 bill. Woo nice. Right there! That's you know what that is? Time? That's uh, internet money. <laughs> that's not, oh. It's not very much. Don't go into the internet if you want to know. That's a little little that's, tip. That's almost over. That's almost over. I wish done. I had more. <laughs> yeah. If I had seen the video earlier, I, I would have scrounged for more. No, I, I, <laughs> no it's, it's really wonderful, and I'm happy to try to contribute, but I'm going to win. So you're Okay, not so this it. is what's on the table. So, all right. Uh, you talked a lot about movies and games on TRS, and so we thought it would be fun to play a game about movies. See what we did there? Okay, uh, so this is a game called Movie Mashups. The way it works is we will give you the plot of two existing movies combined, and you will tell us what the title of the new movie would be. For example... If I said a relationship columnist leaves her Manolos and Manhattans behind to battle Jessica Alba and Mickey Rourke in a dark, brooding metropolis that houses underworld thugs and crime bosses, you would say... Uh, the last one's Sin City. The first one is... Something sin? Manolo's. Sex and the Sin City, because it's a mashup of oh, a ma sex so and the city overlap. and the Sin City. Okay, sex yes, and Yes, that's my city. next line. Keep in mind, the titles are not just linked, they're mashed. Right. Got it? Got it. Okay. 
Are you ready? Much, much harder that way. Yeah, Got you're, it. you're gonna lose. Still okay. gonna win. Uh, okay, here we go. Ready? Yes. Ready. He's confident. Okay. A blind Audrey Hepburn must battle psychos Alan Arkin and Bane, while one looks for hidden heroin and the other plots to destroy Gotham City. Um, well, uh, it's uh, the miracle worker and, and no, okay. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, well, it's Batman. Uh, it's the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm afraid of the dark. Uh, uh, who's afraid of the dark? What is that? Alone in the dark. <laughs> dark. Wait. Rise. Hang on. Let the bread wait, rise. Wait. Let it come to you. Just wait. Uh, <laughs> wait until Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> yeah! Pretty confident I'm gonna win this. That was worth one point. <laughs> I gotta talk it out. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm winning. You're, so far, you've got one point. Ben Stiller tries to make up for a disastrous date with Cameron Diaz, only to discover she's given birth to Satan's child. There's something about Mary's omen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you go to the movie? <laughs> Uh, there's something about Rosemary's baby was the answer we were that looking doesn't... for. Okay. So that it was right. worth ten Got points. It. That one was worth ten. So I'm ahead by so one. You're at minus nine at this <laughs> time. It's good. This is how I do. It's called rope a dope. <laughs> a CIA agent raises an orphan lion cub and eventually releases it into the wild while battling assassins and amnesia. <laughs> Could you repeat the question, please? <laughs> a CIA agent. Right, obviously Jack Ryan. Matt Damon. <laughs> raises an orphan lion cub and eventually releases it into the wild. Go, Elsa, go, while battling assassins and amnesia. You're no longer constrained. You are free, Willy. <laughs> obviously, obviously, because that's about lions. Anyone? The audience is. The born free identity. Yes. Born free identity. That was worth 30 points. So you oh. are at minus 30. The you thing you don't understand is that I've here. realized that the points go up, so I only have to get the last question right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, okay. Here we go. Yes. Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor play mm. a bitter married couple tormenting one another. Right. while simultaneously living the high life by ripping off stock investors. Taming of the Shrew. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Cleopatra. Um, all right. I don't know the second one. What's this, what was the second one again? Um, uh, while living the high life by ripping off stock investors. Perhaps with their friend Jonah Hill. And maybe Leo DiCaprio. Hmm, right. And lots uh, of women. Everyone else has it. Uh, it is, um, I, 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 my brain isn't working. I know the movie in the first one, but I can't oh, really think first, of it. What's the movie in the first one? Well, I can't remember the title, which knock, is what well, the part that you want to know. How about the making of Knock Knock? Oh, yeah, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf of Wall Street? Yay! Yay! Right. <laughs> that was worth 0.5 points. So. <laughs> Minus Wait, what? Point five. Correct. Correct. Okay. Two, two more to go. <clears throat> two Mexican teenage boys and a beautiful older woman conspire to murder Danny DeVito's intimidating mother. E2 Mambien throw mama from the train. E2 Mambien throw mama tumbien. Yeah, yes. Something like that. Throw two Mama Tambien from the train. Well, uh, yes. All right. That was worth. 37.5 points. Yes! We're at minus one. Oh my god, I can't believe the, the odds of that being worth exactly that amount. That is crazy. It all comes down to this. <laughs> Let's see. I'm ready. Well, all, I, all I need is one point to win, right? Or two points to win. You need 300 points to win. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is worth 301 points. Let's see. <laughs> While tracking the mysterious Piranha Women tribe, Bill Maher and Mel Gibson are suddenly able to read women's minds and learn their most private thoughts. What women want is in there. What was the first part, Piranhas? 
while tracking the mysterious Piranha Women Tribe. Bill Maher. The mysterious Piranha Women Tribe. What you don't know is that I am an expert of Piranha Women Tribe movies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared for a second. <laughs> and uh, the answer is? Do you have an answer? Yes. Is that your answer? Uh, it's <laughs> Jaws for the revenge of what women want. <laughs> Close, very close. Come on, it's what cannibal women in the avocado jungle of death want. <laughs> You've all seen that, right? Yeah. Oh gosh. Oh, that so one was close. worth 301 points. So now you're at minus 302. I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm afraid. No, oh, let me I'm write it. You did not win, and you will be donating that fifty dollars. I do hope that you're not too disappointed, because after all. The game, the game was, was rigged. rigged. You've lost the game, you'll pay the price. But losing never felt so nice. Your reputation bears no stain because your loss is... Aim and Cannon Comedy Project at Inner City Arts is... Game! game. Yay! One more time for Jeff Kanata, ladies and gentlemen. He's been a great sport. Let him hear it. Thank you.